I would just have to guess that I have a couple hundred hours probably in it already, maybe close to 300. I haven't kept track. All I know is it just takes hours and hours and hours. <laughs> This is a project that I had intended to build before I built the 327, and it's a, a 409, Chevrolet 409, which is really old, and a lot of people won't remember them, but uh, they were called a W motor, uh, partly because of the shape of the valve covers, and they were the, um, the muscle motor of the 60s. This engine probably would be like a 63, 64, uh, 425 horse, 409, that's what it represents anyway. Yeah. To begin with, I'll show you the block. You can see that the, the decks on the block are not 90 degrees like they are in a regular V8. They're, I think, 30 degrees difference. So that means that um, that was done that way so that the combustion chamber was all in the cylinder. There's no combustion chamber in the heads on these engines. The heads are, are just flat like a diesel. Mm -hmm. So the combustion chamber is all is down in this portion of the cylinder. It's kind of a wedge-shaped combustion chamber. Chevrolet did this um, in the 348s and 409s and actually Ford did it. Um, there was, I don't remember the year, but there was a year of Lincoln V8s that had these uh, wedge-shaped combustion chambers that were in the cylinders too. These engines only had two bolt mains, um, but you can kind of see how it's made up. Um, and it's, it's as close as I could get dimensionally uh, on all everything that's on the side of the block. But the block again, like the 327, just started out as a, as a chunk of aluminum. It's been machined and carved mm. um, down to this point. You can see that it has sleeves in it, has um, iron sleeves in it, just like a regular motor would have. So it would have a bore of 660 thousandths. And uh, the stroke is, I think it's four, I can't remember, 480 something is the stroke. They're square yet for the rocker arms, the rocker arm studs. Those will be machined down round and they're all, they'll get drilled and tapped for, um, a rocker arm studs. Um, it's a crankshaft. <clears throat> and the crankshaft is finished. Uh, you can see it has oil holes in it and everything. It's all drilled for oil. And it's made out of uh, 4340 steel. And uh, so this is a very time consuming part as you can imagine. You can kind of see what size it is um, compared to my hand. There's a camshaft. <clears throat> People always ask about a camshaft. How do you go about making a camshaft? Because they're kind of scientific. You can see it has a helical gear cut yeah. on the back of it. Uh, you can't buy a gear that size that I know of. So that has to be cut in. This is a distributor gear that matches up, matches up to this um, drive gear on the camshaft like that. There's tin work that has to be done. The simplest of which is just the timing cover. Um, that's a, it's stamped, it's pressed out of um, uh, stovepipe material, 28 gauge, I think it is, but it has to be, um, some of the stovepipe material won't form like this, it tears. So it has to be the right material to do it. But, but you can see that it's formed formed in a die, pressed die. And then the oil pan, <clears throat> as you can see, it's, um, I tried to get all the detail I could. Even, even this, if you've ever seen a 409 pan, you can see the shape of that, where that dipstick tube goes down in there. And the stiffening ribs on the sides are in the right place. Everything is dimensioned exactly like the pan with the two here and one there. And then you can see that it's, it's tin. It's a tin pan, just like a real pan, only it's pressed out of 28 gauge steel. And then there's the valve covers. These are kind of unique to the, <clears throat> to the 409. It's where they got the idea of, to call them a, a W motor because it, 
it, the valve covers kind of look like a W. So those, these are pressed out of stainless steel. As you can see, they're, they're just tin. Okay, here's the intake manifold. <clears throat> this um, is a copy. I borrowed a manifold from people that I knew um, and, and copied it. It's not a casting, it's all carved out of two pieces. Uh, there's still some finish work to do on the back, but you can see that it's welded down the middle because that's the only way you can get to those um, those lower planes, those lower runners here that come in low into the manifold as you have to make it in two pieces and do all that machine work and then you put it together and weld it all the way around, TIG weld it all the way around and that's how you come up with, with a dual plane manifold with all the runners and everything, because otherwise you can't get down in there to do it. The water pump <clears throat> is not finished yet. You can see I've got a lot of it done, but but these uh, these hollowed out runners have to be done yet, which is is kind of tricky. So anyway, I've gotten the outside of it. You can see this side is pretty well finished. Some of this is finished, but I have some finish work to do here. But anyway, that's what the water pump. And of course the flywheel, the flywheel is, a, is just a scaled down um, big block flywheel, um, drilled the right dimensions for an 11 inch clutch. It has the six bolt holes and, and one lineup pin hole, and it's just made out of steel. And of course the rods, um, they're just, just aluminum, these need a little bit of finish work on them, but um, they're pretty much done. And the valves, <clears throat> valves are stainless steel. And uh, you can see the difference, the intake valve and an exhaust valve. The stem is 60 thousandths in diameter. And they're, they're a heartbreak to have to do because that's really tiny. And of course they have a groove cut in them. I don't know if you can see that yeah. or not, but can yeah. you see that groove? Mm -hmm. There's a little C-clip goes in there that's a keeper that um, for, for the valve keeper. So how much time do you think you have in this motor so far? I would just have to guess that I have, you know, a couple of hundred hours probably in it already, maybe, maybe close to 300. I haven't kept track. All I know is it just takes hours and hours and hours. I got to make pistons, which will be castings, real small castings, um, and wrist pins. Um, I have rod bearings to make. The main bearings are done, but the rod bearings need to be made. And, uh, and then the heads have to be finished. The heads have, uh, the guides are in the heads and the seats, the valve seats are in the heads. They're bronze. Um, but there's valve gear that has to be made. Uh, uh, rocker arms have to be made, push rods, uh, lifters. And um, there's still a little bit of an oil gallery that has to be drilled into that motor too, which is kind of tricky. So carburetors, um, those had two Carter AFB carburetors on it. So I'll have to try to duplicate those to make them kind of look like, you know, as much as I can, a real carburetor. And uh, a distributor and oil pump, and it'll use the same, um, distributor cap so I don't have to do that over again and it uses the same spark plugs so I don't have to come up with anything new on that and um, other than that that's that's where I'm at on the 409. All right everybody that's the those are some details on the Chevrolet 409 that my dad's working on right now so you know like and subscribe to our channel here so that we know that uh, you like what you're seeing and uh, we can build more content for you here so until next time uh, from the Moyer made garage it's uh, Jim and Joe we'll talk to you soon